Welcome to part two of the advanced Revit course. In this lesson, we're going to be adding a project parameter that will allow us to organize our project browser and organize our sheets. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. As I was mentioning earlier, the project isn't going to have a sequential order of 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, when it's going from floor plans to elevations to perspectives. We want some way to be able to organize this inside of the Revit project and then also organize it so that when it prints out in a PDF, it doesn't have 100 to 104, which is an elevation, and then back to 105, which is another floor plan. We want some kind of consistent structure or system to the way we organize our sheets. And that starts in Revit. So what we want to do is we're going to be creating a new parameter and a new filter for the project browser. So first thing we want to do is add a parameter. Now this might sound a little bit scary, adding parameters and all of this constraint kind of stuff, but it's really simple. What we're going to do is go up to project parameters under the manage tab. And with this, we can add a new parameter. And we're gonna call this drawing type. We're gonna make sure that it's an instance and we're gonna change the type of parameter to a text. We're gonna to want to leave it on values are aligned per group type. And then we're gonna to want to choose a Revit category that we want to focus on. And for us, that should be quite obvious. We want to focus on sheets. So I'm gonna click on the side here and type SH to bring up sheets. And then I'm just gonna check that on. Now we can go ahead and click OK. That's all we need to do there. We'll click OK again and come down to our project browser. Where we have sheets, we can right click that and go to Pro, uh, browser organization. We're going to choose a new type of organization scheme to apply to the project browser. By clicking new, we can call this drawing type, similar to our parameter. And for grouping and sorting, we're gonna group it by what we've just put in, our new parameter, drawing type. So this is talking back to that project parameter that we just created. Now this is going to be using all characters and that's all fine. And we can sort it still by the sheet number. That's good. We're going to click on drawing type and tick that on, click apply and then click OK. Now you're going to see that sheets are now all under this category of three question marks, which is obviously not what we wanted. But when we bring this out, you can see that our sheets are all still there but they're just being categorized under a specific branch now. And the good thing about this is that you now see that we've got a new parameter under properties for each sheet. And that parameter is drawing type. So under the ground floor plan, I'm just gonna select that. And then I'm gonna to come to drawing type and you're gonna see there's nothing to choose from because we haven't created any drawing types yet. But this drawing type is going to be plans. I'm going to use all capitals so it's consistent with the project browser, but I'm also going to add a 100 to the start of that because that way we know that each drawing is going to be categorized, which is a plan, under the number 100 or it's going to start with a 1 because then it's going to be at the start of the set. Doing so, that also means that if we add a drawing, say an, uh, a section um, later on and it's numbered at say 146 because it hasn't been categorized in numbers. That means that when we do that, each drawing following from 146 is going to be adjusted. And that can take a lot of time, especially when you have to do that manually. And so rather if we split up each drawing set to plans, elevations, sections, then we're only going to be affecting those numbers within those categories. So if we change or we add a floor plan later on, which is going to be 112, it doesn't affect anything in 200 or 300 or 400. And that will make sense once we actually do it. I just thought I'd touch on that now. So let's change the drawing type to 100 plans and apply that. You're going to see that we've now got this new category under our sheets in the project browser, which has categorized it to A100 ground floor plan under our 100 plans. We can now then select both of our other plans and change the drawing type 
to be 100 plans and they're now going to be categorized under this plan set which is perfect now these other ones aren't categorized aren't categorized yet so we're going to select both of the elevation pages and make this 200 elevations and this is just how I like to do it I like to go from plans to elevations to sections and then from there on it kind of might vary a bit depending on what kind of projects you have so you can see that's just created now both of these sheets to be on or under this category of elevations which is going to make it a lot more simpler to work with when we're going through our project browser and once it starts to get increasingly bigger and bigger now the perspectives we can make these I'm just going to make this number maybe I'm just trying to look at a previous project here and see what we did um, perspectives usually go under 800 um, but this can vary but for now we're going to make that 800 so I'm just going to change the drawing type to 800 and then we're going to just call this maybe 3D views. And now we've got three different categories for our sheets. It's one, a lot easier to go through when we are just trying to find sheets in our project. And two, when we print it, it's going to be categorized properly. Although we haven't yet changed the numbers for each of these sheets. So the elevations are all going to start now with the letter two. And then going to be 201, 202, 203. All of the 3D views are going to start with the letter or the number 8. And they're going to be 800, 801, 802, and so forth. So I'm going to select the east slash west elevations page. I don't need to actually open it up. I can do it all from the properties panel. I'm going to change the sheet number to 200, A200. And we're going to make this north slash south elevations. 201 a 201 and so now they're categorized sequentially from 2 up to 299 and then for the elevations we're going to make this a 800 for the external perspective we can make that a 801 and that would go all the way up to 899 now the reason we change these numbers individually is so that when we do print these to a PDF or print out the actual drawing set it's so that they are going to be in the right order you're going to go from floor plans down to the elevations down to the sections down to the perspectives whereas if we still just number these a 102 and then it jumped to a 103 that's where I was talking about earlier where if you were to add something else in between these two sheets you'd then have to adjust all of the following sheets after that one that is here so by doing this now you only have to change the elevation sheet numbers rather than having to change all of the sheets after so we've now looked at creating sheets adding title blocks to that sheet and then also adding all of our views to sheets so we started looking at organizing our project so that it's nice and neat and makes things more efficient and we looked at how to print our sheets and create drawing sets we're going to constantly come back to how we can make things more efficient inside of Revit and how we can organize our project better but for now we're going to move on to annotating and making the project and the sheets look really good and detailed so let's get into it in the next lesson we're going to be creating grid lines and going over the best practices for doing so if you'd like to get access to all of the course files materials and resources as well as 20 hours of ad free content you can feel free to check out the full course on my website i'll see you there